Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Crimes, Killers, Cults, and Beer. <laughs> and Beer. And before we get started, uh, just have, have some announcements that I need to make. And if you've been listening, I'm sure you've noticed that the past four episodes, have, there's been some, something a little different about them. You know, they're, um, they've all been, I've been on all of them. I'm Bill, by the way. And hey, I've Bill. Been, <laughs> hey, and I've been on all of them, but I've had guest hosts like the um, the Peter Curtin episode had you know, Matthew from Murder Coaster that on parts one and two. The um, Bernie Teed episode had Jessica from um, Texas True Crime and the Derek Todd Lee episode, which was the last episode that we just put out, um, was me with Jody Pluche. That somebody's missing. Todd is missing. So, and that is because Todd has decided that he no longer wants to do the the podcast. Um, yeah, I mean, there's there's no bad blood or anything like that. We're we're friends still. I've known the guy for 35 years. You know, it's not like we had a fight or anything like that. He just decided that it wasn't for him anymore, and I respect that. I respect his decision. And but I like doing the podcast, and I wanted to continue. So. I'm introducing the new co-host, uh, Mr. Paul Meckes. How's it going? Pleasure to be here, brother. Give and yourself a round of applause. To, uh, be part of the uh, of the podcast. <laughs> but so, um, Paul also does a podcast, and um, go ahead, go ahead and tell us a little bit about your podcast. So the podcast is called The Seance part of conscious radio network um which is a sister company the sister uh, the parent company but the podcast itself is called the seance and uh, we talk about paranormal metaphysical uh, mysteries of mind space time conspiracies ancient alien theory ufos anything you can think of that'll jog the mind awesome <clears throat> so um yeah and and if you remember correct uh correctly if you remember um back months ago um paul was on us when we covered uh that paul oh boy this is starting off lovely <laughs> <laughs> paul was on with todd and i when we covered heaven's gate so and that was a really fun episode that was a cool episode i learned yeah. a lot from that believe it or not so. uh, i did too doing the notes and um and i decided at that point that um that if todd ever left i wanted you to replace him so here you are <laughs> here i am so um okay so now that that's out of the way um we're also for those of you listening on audio you know on spotify or apple or whatever um the episodes from this point on are also going to be on YouTube with videos. So you're going to get to see my ugly ass and his cool looking ass. Well, not our asses, but our faces. <laughs> they'll, yeah, they'll get to see a, a, a face to the name and the voice. You know, right. Like, hey, you got a good radio voice <laughs> <laughs> and a good face to go with the radio. I once told somebody <laughs> that they had a voice made for newsprint. <laughs> 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 uh, i mean it's, it it's it's the it's the bastard steps brother of the um face made for radio thing there you go <laughs> yeah it is getting hot in here so everybody can eventually see this uh on the youtube channel um it uh, the youtube channel is conscious radio network so if you go to the you go to youtube and just uh type in conscious radio network um, I have created, I have created a playlist for these shows. So um, eventually, this will be once this gets posted to the podcast outlets. This will also be put up on that channel. Okay. <clears throat> I thought we were. I thought I, I have a CKCB um, YouTube page with nothing on it, but I mean that you're... that we cr yeah, cross platform man everywhere. Okay, so we'll put it on both. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, we're we're still figuring things out. It took us like thirty minutes to, before we started to, just to get to the point where we were ready to push record. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And also, also, if you if you notice, if you're watching the video, Paul here did the um, 
the animation that, that accompanies the intro and he also does it on the outro so um so it's cool i mean the the, the show's already the show's already taken you know a giant leap <laughs> evolution man evolution so anyway um i have no more ado do you i do not let's move forward all right well today we are covering the san francisco witch killers <laughs> which is michael bear carson and suzanne bear barnes or carson they, they changed their names so many damn times in the story it's not even funny but we're, we're, we'll just call them michael bear and suzanne bear there we go they were a pair of American serial killers who killed three people in Northern California between 1981 and 1983. And they were dubbed the San Francisco witch killers. And they were, they were drug dealing hippies who didn't really adhere to the, the peace aspect that hippies generally live by. <laughs> oh, the rebels. Uh, idiots is more like it. <laughs> yeah. Um, they created their own religion, which is basically Islam on acid. <laughs> <laughs> literally they were baked when they came up with it and they were pretty much baked all the time and they took the teachings of islam and twisted it to reflect whatever acid fueled revelation they had yeah and it, it this was basically a mini cult so it is going to get the cult outro just because yeah. <laughs> And at the crime scenes, police would find um, strange religious symbols painted on the walls along with the name Suzanne, S-U-Z-A-N. Hmm. So Su Suzanne Bear Carson was born Susan Barnes on September 14th, 1941 in Scottsdale, Arizona. She had a really good childhood. Her, her father had a great job as a newspaper executive and during World War II, that newspaper newspaper was probably a pretty good uh, career to to have so um her, her mother didn't even have to work and, but and they were loving parents as well but around the time that suzanne turned five or six she started believing that she was psych psychic and began isolating herself from other people and how a five or six year old d decides that they're psychic i mm. i don't know how, i don't know how that happens <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty early. <laughs> so, so um, she didn't do well in school. She didn't have hardly any friends, and she dropped out of school at 17 and went on a quest to find something better. But she married a businessman who was about 10 years older than she was, and she wound up living a life similar to that, what she had when she was living with her parents. <laughs> so, so basically... <laughs> out of out of the out of the frying pan and into the frying pan yeah <laughs> not far from the tree but that didn't last long because in the 1960s the the hippie counterculture was beginning to thrive and she she was all into that drugs free love spirituality and everything else that came with it and, and that doesn't really make for a harmonious marriage <laughs> no makes for a lot of fun though <laughs> yeah yeah especially in the 60s yeah i remember watching this um oh god it was the guy that the the nerd on um what was it family ties he was doing stand-up and he was just like he was just like um they they referred to the the 60s as the, the 70s as the mead generation or whatever yeah. and he's, he's like yeah thanks to because of what what all y'all did and everything the only person i can have sex with now is me <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> that might have been the birth of the incels right there <laughs> yeah uh, um, this was when she began crafting her drug drug fueled version of Islam, and this was this was when Susan with an S be, be, bah, became Susan with a Z, Suzanne with a Z, and she also believed that she was a prophet. 
this was as a little kid. I mean, there's, there, there had to have been something else, something else going on there in childhood that, that didn't get reported. I'm she not saying have, yeah. she must have did a lot of stuff. I'm wondering what what studying that she did in the Islam, you know, you know, the Quran or whatnot. You know, what did she? I mean, it, you would have to read a lot and look into a lot of stuff and doing a lot of studying into that culture in order to start coming up with your own ideas and of who I am. Well, she did. <laughs> she did, and and ironically enough, so did Michael. Yeah. So I mean, it, but. But what what happens for a kid to be drawn into that? Like like like, hey, you know, it's just uh, oh, I'm, instead of going out and playing with my friends, I'm going to be psychic and I'm going to um I'm going to read the Quran, I'm going to read the Bible, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, and I'm, I'm you know, <laughs> kids. Church is the most boring thing to a kid, whether whether that they they're religious or not, whether they grow up to be in religion or not, as a kid. Church is about the most boring thing in existence on the planet. <laughs> indoctrination. It's a form of indoctrination, sort of be, you know. I mean, everybody. It's an institution. Right. Like everything else out there. So. So. <laughs> but lots of cults do this, and they take enough. You were just touching on that. They take enough religion to make it seem legit to somebody on the outside looking in, and then they bring their own personal delusions and rules. Mm-hmm. Over time, it becomes less and less about the religion that it was ripped off from and more and more about what the the leader comes up with in their demented minds. And just about all the coach, the, the coach, the, the coach, the <laughs> have another. <laughs> it's only my second one. <laughs> no, I just get tongue tied. You know this. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, but over time, it becomes less, uh, less than that. Uh, I already said that. Okay. Just about all cults poach from other religions. Like um, Nexium, for example, poached off of Scientology. You know, so it's not just, it's not just, you know, isol it's not just specific to the religious cults. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the, you know, the, there, there's cults out there that, that will poach the 144,000 from, um, you know, from, and that, that originated, uh, it originated from a loose text in the Bible, but then, or, or maybe it was from Judaism. I'm not sure, but, um, but then that a lot of, you know, the Mormons and a lot of, um, a lot of smaller and even more deadly cults, um, latched onto that. Like the anthill kids, for example, they, Bought into the hundred forty four thousand, and they are nothing like hmm, the the Hill kids are in a category all their own, <laughs> yeah. like the the worst of the worst. But anyway, Susan's husband had enough, and he divorced her. And this is what she wanted because she was free, and she could be whoever or whatever she wanted, and the world was hers to make into whatever she wanted it to be. And at that point, she began studying apocalyptic, apocalyptic religious sex, and she believed that Judgment Day and the end was near. Mm. She was a warrior for God, and she needed to recruit many godly followers to fight evil. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> yeah, there's evil everywhere. There's evil everywhere. And, um, yeah, it just... <clears throat> yeah, no. I'll say it at that. <laughs> well, they, I mean, all, you know, all the, all the, one thing, one thing that I don't understand about cult leaders is how they come up with this idea that it's only them. They are the only people on the entire planet that has the, you know, the keys, the, the keys to heaven, so to speak. Everybody else from, you know, that point on and everybody else that lived before because that's going to hell because they weren't um, part of their, you know, their, their particular brand of Christianity or whatever. It's like, it's, 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 it's full blown narcissism, but narcissism, but there's, um, but there's more, there's gotta be more to it than that. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. Somebody's always going to pick apart a particular um, sect of the religion and you not know, like, cause we don't all believe 
every single word and letter to the T of the Bible. No. So it's like we all come up with our own viewpoint of something. And then you really go and then somebody will go overboard and go, yeah. well, this is not that because it's this way or it's that way. And yeah. Yeah, it's like like the the Amish. I mean, they I mean, they they pretty much shun away every type of technology or whatever because it didn't exist in the Bible. Well, nothing that exists today existed when the Bible was written. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, um I mean, if you're if you're going to do that then I mean, you know, clothes the clothes that you buy from stores or whatever, they're that's a sin too because they weren't handmade yeah you know yeah. and i and i've been in um i've been in amish country in pennsylvania before and i i, I saw amish people shopping in walmart yep so obviously the rules are changing a little bit <laughs> so obviously they're slowly but so so like by the end of by the end of this century they'll be in the 1960s as far as technology goes or 50s or whatever <laughs> yeah, yeah when all the big mega cities and you know kind of like a scene from demolition man all these big mega cities and stuff and then all you have left are the badlands the, uh, <laughs> the groups the parallel societies that decided not to want to live with uh, the technology if the amish had to relocate out to the badlands they would warm up to electricity real quick <laughs> because it's freaking hot out there and they're going to need some air conditioning <laughs> yep. and it gets really cold at night too sometimes like during certain times of the year it'd be like 110 degrees during the day and 30 degrees at night <laughs> yeah yeah but yeah especially out in the desert yeah <laughs> so um but she also knew that she was destined to find somebody she has visions and they showed her a spiritual partner a soulmate but all she really wanted was a follower, and she found him, um, Michael Bear Carson. Now, Michael was born James Carson, and he he wound up believing her delusions 100% and followed her ver verbatim. He was born in Tulsa, Oklahoma in 1950, and he was raised in a loving middle-class family. Um, his father was an oil engineer, and his mother was a school teacher. Nothing out of the ordinary here, aside from the fact that he was diagnosed with a bone disorder as a young boy. He was put on bed rest for several years, but he made the best of it. He he started reading anything that you know anything that he could get his hands on, things that were way out of the norm for a, a kid's normal interests. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, like we were talking about with um, Suzanne there. Um, so she was the initiator. Yeah, she, she got him. Yeah, she got him. <laughs> oh, we'll get we'll get to that. I mean, you you have the initial copy of my notes, but mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I had to fill some things in. I I fill in, I go into greater detail about how they met, and we'll get to that shortly. Cool. <laughs> but Michael got into things like philosophy, religion, history, politics, all politics, specifically Marxism. But with all that religion that he studied, nothing made sense to him. So, but he did know an awful lot about multiple religions. So he decided that he was an atheist. Hmm. He did recover from that disorder and he became a very well read smart ass. And as a teen, he got into sex and drugs and rock and roll, just like everybody else. I'm not going to conform, man. <laughs> so, so I'm going to conform to what the other cats are conforming, not to conform to, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, that that's not that's not not one hippie ever said that, but that's they might as well have because that's what they were doing. Yeah, but by not conforming to everything else, then they're conforming to counterculture. <laughs> <laughs> yep. There's no escaping conformity. <laughs> no escaping it. <laughs> Michael even started an anti-establishment chapter of the Students for a Democratic Society. This is in high school. He was trying really hard to rally his cause, but um, but the people weren't having it. He just wasn't a leader. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
1968, he went to San Francisco where he adopted the hippie counterculture. He was a very outspoken opponent of Vietnam, of the Vietnam war. Um, he, in 1969, he went to, he enrolled in the University of Iowa and um, he didn't make friends very well because he became obsessed with the anti-government anarchist views as well as Marxism. How can you have Marxism and be an anarchist? Hmm. Yeah, <laughs> bipolar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, uh, Jackal and Mr. Hyde. Yeah, it's like I'm a Christian and a Satanist. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Christian and an atheist. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Christian, Satan, and Satanist, and atheist. Right. I'm a little bit of everything, all rolled into one. I do not discriminate. <laughs> <laughs> Don't call me confused. I'm not confused. You're confused. <laughs> Stop looking at me. <laughs> so, uh, he was the guy who would walk up to anyone and just started preaching uh, whether you wanted to hear it or not. And then he would get belligerent if you didn't want to hear it. <laughs> it like, hey, man, the government, man, it, it sucks. But, but you got to follow Marxism, man, because that's the way to go. But Marxism is, is part of the government, which sucks. So therefore, Marxism sucks too, but I am a Marxist. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a new character there. The, the, confused, the confused hippie. Yeah. <laughs> I have to work on that. <laughs> well, um. He did meet a woman there named Lynn, who was also a rebel hipsy, mar hip, hipsy, hipsy, hippie Marxist. <laughs> and they were married in their sophomore year, and they later had a child, Jen. In 1975, the three packed up and they moved to Arizona. Woohoo! Arizona. You know, you, know, you know who else is in it? Arizona? Suzanne. She's waiting. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> So Lynn was a teacher and Michael was <clears throat> and his daughter, Jen's own words, a stay at home dad slash pot dealer. <laughs> mm. um, but he, he was a great father when he was young, but nothing lasts forever. And maybe Michael realized that he was conforming to the society's expectation of what he should be, man. And he had to get back to not conforming by conforming to what the other nonconformists were conforming to. And I can't believe I said that without getting tongue tied. <laughs> That's well said. <laughs> <clears throat> Unscripted is the best, man. <laughs> Michael started becoming antisocial and he had no friends. Nobody liked him. He hated the U.S. government and would rant about it to whoever would listen. And if you disagreed, he would explode on you. And he was constantly high on drugs and he also began abusing Lynn. So finally, like Suzanne's husband, Lynn had had enough and they divorced and they had been fighting about literally everything. The fact that Michael wouldn't get a job, his drug use and his bizarre and batshit crazy behavior, his temper, pretty much everything. <laughs> this guy was a pretty much a, a fucking tool. Yeah. There was even an instance where Michael like slammed, um, you know, like broke a, a glass and then, um, and then Jen, the, the little girl, she crawled through and, um, you know, like while they were fighting, they didn't notice her. And, and she crawled in like right into where the broken glass was and cut the shit out of her hand on a shard of glass had to be taken to the hospital. Wow. But, um, so <clears throat> Jen, you know, they've been married for eight years and, and they divorced and Jen obviously stayed with Lynn. So shortly later, Michael met Suzanne. Love and pot smoke were in the air and likely color trails on everything that they saw, too. Fireworks. <laughs> Fireworks. So Michael, after his divorce, he began believing, they're wanting to believe in God again. And Suzanne was searching for uh, something. <laughs> 
She just wanted to be God. <laughs> but if 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 but if Michael was really searching for God, he's not hard to find. There's churches everywhere. Yeah. Um, I think he was searching for, for a God that would tell him everything that he wanted to hear, much like Suzanne. So it was a match. It was a match made somewhere. <laughs> match made on earth. Yeah. I was going to say heaven, but not their yeah. heaven. They're, they're heaven. Yeah. What's the what's the um it, the Muslim word for heaven? It, is it heaven? Yeah, it's, it's it is heaven, isn't it? Ah. Uh, yeah, I know you were going to ask me that question. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you have the word the word <laughs> doctor at, at, in your name, then you know, I I I, I, I kind of assume that you know things. <laughs> I have a book on it. <laughs> 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 got lots of books i see them that's but, probably um, all that's probably not even that's probably not, that's, e not even a third of them that's not even a third of them yeah <laughs> <laughs> and I, I've, I've just got two small shelves worth of books that, and, and neither shelf is like completely full there but those are all true crime books for sources for go. the um for the show <laughs> but i'm keeping them um, somebody asked me, it's just like, well, why don't you just get them, you know, just get the audio book? I said, because I want to have a physical library. Yeah. Like, okay, that makes sense. And I do. It'd be cool to have a physical library. And I, you know, it's going to be not too much longer before that, that little case that I have back there is full. <laughs> <laughs> they fill up quick, man. They fill mm -hmm. up quick. <clears throat> so, um, <sighs> It was magic, and they were they were what they had been looking for. <laughs> um, Suzanne saw him at a party, and she walked right up to him and said that Allah had just told her his, that his real name was Michael, as in the Archangel. <laughs> and the first the first thing that Susan that Suzanne did was to get him to change his name, and lots of cults do this. You got to erase their true identity and submit. Yeah. So. James Carson was now Michael, as in the Archangel, the one from the Bible who fights the devil. And do you by any chance know if Michael, the Archangel, shows up in the Quran? In the Quran, there's other mm -hmm. names, other names for him. Um, oh, the same character, though. All the Archangels, yeah, all the Archangels are uh, personified in pretty much most, most of all the ancient religions. Different names. <clears throat> okay, so it's kind of like um, Greek. Um, Greek mythology versus Italian mythology. The yeah. same people, different names. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so he was now Michael Carson. Suzanne was 10 years older than Michael, and he had helped her get her groove back. He made her feel beautiful and sexy. and But she saw herself as intellectual, intellectually superior to Michael, which really wasn't the case since Michael was very well studied on pretty much everything. But he went along with it. You know, he needed a, a guide. He needed a leader. Yeah. And so Suzanne had found a follower. And she said that she had wandered the astral plane for thousands of years waiting for her soulmate. And Michael was it. <laughs> <laughs> you see her back, you know, a thousand years ago, drifting through space. Michael. <laughs> Wait, you're a Klingon, Michael. <laughs> right. <laughs> I want there to be a cult, and, and I, I, Heaven's Gate was almost this, but I want there to be a cult which bases their um, their entire doctrine around Star Trek. Mm. I mean, Heaven's I Gate was. Heaven's Gate yeah. touched on it, but that was I, I want I want there to be one that's completely based on Star Trek. There might be. You'd there be might surprised. be. We just don't know about it yet. Yeah. I <laughs> mean, the whole Trekkie, the whole Trekkie phenomenon out there. I mean, there's there's probably I wouldn't doubt there's probably some sort of a, a group out there, very small group, that are starting to or have been, you know, bringing yeah. people in and and they get together and they they do sermons and cling on. Yeah, <laughs> secret handshakes and, secret, and secret hand handshakes. signs and yeah. <laughs> and special, you know, clicks like 
clock, 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 you know, yeah. weird things. And they all talk with flip phones. They all talk yeah. on flip phones because, you know, the communicators. Yeah. They're not gonna. They're not gonna switch to a regular smartphone. It's got to be the flip phone because that very much resembles what they had. Yeah. You know, well, the, the the communicator they had in the original Star Trek series was what ultimately inspired the flip phone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So they, they all talk with. They they all have flip phones. <laughs> yeah. But so Michael brought up Christianity, which Su- Suzanne laughed off. She was like, ah, ha, ha, ha. "Christians are just hypocrites that followed a false doctrine. Allah was the only god that was real." So Michael converted to Suzanne's version of Islam, just like that. I was like, okay, that's it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the couple was constantly on acid, pot, and drinking all the time. So they had lots of times to come up with the craziest ideas, and and they thought that they were so deep with some insight, which made them well, well, her on a much higher plane of existence than anybody else on the planet. Mm. <laughs> Michael immediately moved in with her and she was more, and he was more than happy to let her guide him wherever she wanted. So they sold everything that they had and began going to different places around the world, searching for spiritual enlightenment. And they also adopted the last name bear because Michael liked bears as a kid. Hmm. That, that was, Kind of a weird detail. I mean, yeah. You know, what what if he liked dinosaurs? <laughs> could have been. It could have been like, uh, you know, being out in that area of the of the of the U.S. You know, you got a lot of a Native American, you know, association. Good point. So it could have been a tot- It could have been an, an animal totem that some psychic or some intuitive gave him from a, tr- a local tribe or something. <clears throat> Good point. Good point. I didn't even think about that. So in London, the pair was married. The the it, in, in London, the pair was married in a Suzlam ceremony. <laughs> Suzlam. 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 And they went to Stonehenge. And and Susan was pregnant at that point, but when they got to Stonehenge, she felt weak. All the sorcery around her. There was sorcery all over the place, and it was draining her powers. And she decided that witches were everywhere and that their evil was responsible for, for sapping her energy. She miscarried at the same around that same time, which really drove it home to Michael that she was for real. It's like, see, see, I miscarried, Michael. Um that, that that's proof. I'm under attack. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. She had, she had pretty much she had perverted Islam so much to, um, to to her needs, and she convinced Michael that they were now modern day witch hunters. Mm. <laughs> kind of like, uh, kind of like Sam and Dean Winchester. You know, I thought about that. But they're they're more real than what the the, the bullshit that these two chuckleheads. Oh believe yeah, in. <laughs> yeah. They were yeah. Sam and Dean were fun, man. Yeah, they they kind of lost me on that final season, but I I made it through all of every <laughs> single season of that except for the final one. There was like twenty seasons, I think. Yeah. And yeah. I just I just read the other day that they're making another another season what? of Supernatural. Yeah, wow. I'm probably I'm probably gonna sit that one out. It's just uh, that Scooby Doo episode they did was fucking gold. <laughs> <laughs> but in 1980, they returned to the U.S. and they had become, and I quote, vegan Muslim warriors for God. <laughs> huh. Vegan now, it, Muslim warriors. Hmm. It's, okay. It, it's commonly known that um, that vegans generally don't, you know, they're they're not really strong because they don't have the the vitamins from meat and everything. Yeah, so lack you, of iron and yeah. If you and if you have, and I'm not, not I'm not knocking vegans. You know, you do what you want, but it, it's a scientific fact that if all you eat is um is vegetables, you're 
going to be weaker than somebody who eats meat. So yeah, an be, army, yeah. an army of vegans isn't going to be very formidable. <laughs> exactly. You're going to become a vegetable if you that's all you eat. Yeah. So I don't think I pissed off or any vegan listeners that we might have <laughs> with that because I, I explained it scientifically, you know, but I don't know who knows, <laughs> but, um, they, they made their money from selling drugs and the way that they interpreted Islam would have gotten them executed if they had been in a Muslim country. Mm. Yeah. I mean, they did not take kindly. They, they don't take kindly to people, you know, changing the rules. <laughs> yeah, especially today. I mean, maybe back right. in the '80s, it would have been a little bit, bit, bit different. But today, no, it was still. It was still. It was still at the, the 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 fundamentalist is uh, Muslims have been like crazy barbarians since the you know since the beginning of time. I mean, and and when I notice, I said fundamentalist. I did not say. Um, all Muslims. I said mm. the fundamentalists, the, the, the ISIS or the Al Qaeda or whatever, the, yeah. the militants. And they were very much around back then in the eighties. I mean, you just remember the, um, and I'm drawing a complete blank here, but, um, the whole thing with the, um, the Olympic hostage thing, that was, that was militant Muslims. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, back the in the seventies. Huh? Yeah. The extremists. Yeah. So I mean it's it's so yeah if they if they had been living in say Syria or Iran or Iraq or whatever and and started preaching that shit they they did they did gotten got <laughs> yeah and I noticed on their little world tour they didn't go to any Muslim countries <laughs> they they went to Europe and and the UK yeah yeah. So they had a destination in mind. San Francisco's hate Ashbury district. <laughs> uh, uh, what could go wrong? <laughs> so they would crash at the drug customers' houses and moving on to the next one whenever they got tired of, of the previous or if somebody kicked their crazy asses out to the curb. <laughs> People who they crashed with called them freaks. But once they had been there for a little while, Suzanne been, began feeling weak, and she was convinced that all of the homeless and druggies were all witches, and they were draining her power. <laughs> <laughs> it could be the shit on the sidewalk. Yeah. Oops. <laughs> yeah, that one. But that that's a modern-day San Francisco problem, not back in the 80s. Yeah, it was much better back then. A little cleaner. A little bit. Yeah. But Michael decided that he was a Hashashin. And that's that's an old Muslim sect where the warriors would smoke hash and then go kill their enemies. Michael adopted this so that they could go kill witches. And that was their mission. And they were convinced that the world was full of them. And once again, he... Do witches turn up in the Quran? Mm, maybe not in that context, but um, you know, like the the soothsayers or the prophets and stuff. I'm not sure if they would consider them witches. Huh. But. Still, it's, it's just I, I I've ne I've never even opened a a Quran yeah. before. I've, I've I don't know anything about it other than you know. Yeah, because yeah, I don't have an actual cop. I was going to get a copy of the actual Quran translated in English, but I was like, nah, I'll just get the, the, was it the, the dump, the, what the heck is that thing called? The dummies book for the Quran. Oh. <laughs> Islam for dummies. <laughs> yeah. Islam for dummies. Not going to go there. Yeah. <laughs> 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 <sighs> but they, when they were, um, when they were like going around like London and Holland and all that stuff, they had also, um, you know, she had also see seen the, the homeless people and all that stuff as evidence that the witches were 
take you know in full power and everything and and causing people to get um to wind up you know in dire straits like that and but then once she got to san francisco the homeless and all that stuff were the witches or were, were, were part of the 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 witches organization or whatever mm -hmm. <laughs> huh. um they began looking for cult members i mean recruits to to join the army against the witches um suzanne became convinced that anybody who intimidated her was a witch or a demon um who was on a mission to destroy her and michael so basically she walks into a mcdonald's yeah, i'd like an ice cream ice machine's broken you're a witch <laughs> <laughs> Now that's definitely delusional. It's like, whoa. Not far off though. I am not far off. If 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 that ha if she if she did like really have her stuff her sight set on the her heart set on getting an ice cream cone, and she went into a McDonald's and the ice cream machine was broken, she would you're a witch. <laughs> she would. Yeah. She totally would. Huh. So they start like smudging the machine or something. <laughs> <laughs> that ice cream machine is a witch. <laughs> Bring in this age. <laughs> I'm trying not. I'm trying hard not to go there. <laughs> as far as something that's coming later. <laughs> <laughs> but later, the the uh, the cult. I mean, the couple met uh, a 23, 23 year old Karen Barnes, no relation, at a party, and she looked at these two chuckleheads as being deep, and she bought into what they were preaching you know med medication or medication meditation well they were on a lot of medication ah, that too. <laughs> <laughs> meditation and psychic practices mixed in with their skewed interpret interpretation of islam um immediately suzanne and michael moved into karen's apartment it was a, a small flat in a basement yeah, it's basically an efficiency type apartment, like a hotel room. And what is it with these virgin and cults and cramming people into tiny living spaces? When with you know, lots of them do it. And you know, it it's it's freaking isolation and control. Yeah, it's like you know, lots of cults started out like that, just shacking up with um with like an unsuspecting follower. Hell, the the Apple Whites did that early on. Yeah. Um, Suzanne now had two followers, but not for long. And I need to go do something. I will be right back. All right. 10 4. So Suzanne, Suzanne decided that Karen had to die. And this is a hu huge escalation from nothing to murder. I mean, she has no history of abusing animals, no head injury. This is simply paranoid delusions brought on by constant acid use. That and Karen was young and gorgeous. But, uh, but that plays into the paranoid delusion part of it. Karen didn't. She didn't want Michael, even though they did flirt a little bit. But the the Muslim doctrine that they followed allowed michael to take multiple wives but suzanne wasn't going to have that <laughs> michael was hers so once again she's making changes to the religion yep yeah is islam you know you if you're if you're a muslim by the by rule of their religion you are allowed to have multiple wives so, damn, she didn't think about that when she came up with it in the first place. No, she didn't. <laughs> and, she, and Michael would have kept her captive. It would have been the other way around. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Karen just liked the bullshit that they were spewing, which was exactly what Susan wanted, or Suzanne wanted. But she was too fried to realize that. Yeah, you know, it's said that if you do acid once, you're mentally insane because it changes your mind and i don't know if that's true or not but that that study is out there mm -hmm. yeah i guess it also depends on the person true i know that if i you know it's just, i know i know that if i ever took a hit of acid and that's uh, I, honestly that's something i would like to experience but i know that if i ever dropped acid it would fuck me hard oh yeah <laughs> 
<laughs> I mean, I, it just the, the the way my brain, the way my brain works, and everything. Um, I I have to I have to like really look into dive into everything and just analyze super analyze every everything. I, I'm a Virgo, yeah. but um, but but I. It's just if 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 all of a sudden I started seeing something, you know, something that I couldn't explain like that and everything, and I'm and I'm in like some type of a, you know, altered state or whatever, it would probably drive. It would probably make me insane. And I'll, yeah. I'll be the first to admit that. And the, I've stayed away from it. You know, I've, oh, I've yeah. stayed away from pretty much all drugs. I've, just, <laughs> I've smoked pot seven times in my entire life. Um, and I pretty much, you know, nicotine and, and beer is pretty much all I've touched. And, you know, I grew up in heavy metal scenes and everything. And, you know, it was always all around me. And I, but I just had the fortitude to say no. Yeah. yeah. You know. Because I, I just, I knew it. And it Especially wasn't once like, you see other people tripping on you, like, old oh boy. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to do that. One time I was at this party and this guy was, um, you know, he was just sitting on a recline. It was a house party. And this guy was sitting there, um, you know, on a recliner, just tripping balls. So I go to the refrigerator and I see a little pack of hot dogs. <laughs> so I, I take a, I take a hot dog out and everything. And I kind of, you know, I'd unbutton my, um, my jeans and I went, <laughs> I, I, I put it there like it was my dick and I, I, and I walked up to him, you know, and I said, Hey man, what's going on? I start, I start like, you know, like waving it around, like doing a, like a windmill type of thing. Yeah. He was like, put your dick away, man. I don't want to see that shit. So I, so I, so then I, I, I pulled it up and I just took a huge bite off of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he fucking lost his oh, shit. Yeah. What the fuck, man? He just bit his whole dick off. Oh, <laughs> uh, man. Yeah, that would scare somebody freaking tripping. <laughs> I love that story. <laughs> I, the guy didn't um i mean it i didn't realize it at the time but i really could have fucked him yeah you know, like i i could have really done some serious damage to him i didn't know i didn't yeah. know it at the time it's a funny story but people pulled me aside they're like dude that wasn't cool <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's a particular particular atmosphere for something like that yeah yeah it's but they said it with they said it with like kind of choking back laughter because it it, it was funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I apologized to him later on. You know, like next time I saw him, I'm like, yeah, I'm yeah. sorry about that. I did he was like, Man, he was like, That fucked me up. <laughs> I'm surprised he remembered depending on what he was tripping on. Yeah, you remember, I'm sorry. Sorry for what? <laughs> No, he remembered. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, hashtag, but I digress. Um, so Susan convinced Michael that Karen was a witch. And not just any witch. Not just any witch. She was the top witch in all of San Francisco. Mm -hmm. The most powerful witch. Wow. The queen witch. The queen witch. <laughs> I would I would honestly like to see some like movie producer take this story, but make it like witches were, were real. Yeah. It, like an alternate universe thing and make it to where these people, were, instead of being serial killers, they were le legit witch hunters. Yeah. Just do, do like a like an inglorious bastards type, like alternate universe type thing. I think that would be pretty entertaining. <laughs> yeah, I would. <laughs> huh. So at this point, Michael became Susan's archangel of death, and he did as commanded. Karen had to die. Ooh. So on March 6th of 1981, San Francisco police got a call from an apartment building owner, and he he had a plumber who was doing work in the, the, the basement of the apartment building, which was where the, her flat was. Um, oh, cool. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you told me, you told me about that before and I wasn't even thinking about it. That's but, a key word, man. When you say police, the lights go on. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> whoop, whoop, whoop. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, if, you, if you're listening to the audio version, check it out because he, he's got these little blue and red lights that flash. That's really cool. <laughs> 
<laughs> I wasn't even expecting it. I just said that. It's like I looked over. I looked over. It's like all of a sudden there it was. I was like, "Holy crap! That's cool." <laughs> Pretty soon, people are going to stop listening on Spotify and all the other platforms and watch the YouTube page. <laughs> Got to throw those nuances in there, man. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> so, um, the plumber found Karen Barnes lying dead in the kitchen. She was face down in a pool of blood. And she had been brutally beaten with a cast iron pan to the point to where her skull had been crushed. Cast, cast iron pan will do that. Yeah, those things are heavy. And you're not Ooh. supposed to wash a cast iron pan. Nope. It's easy. I had yeah, I had one. My dad gave it to me. It was 20 years old. Had 20 years worth of... And all he cooked on it was steaks. <laughs> and he gave it to me. And I, 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 people, whenever I'd cook a steak for people, they'd be like, oh, man, these steaks are good. I'm like, what do you... What do you I, I, I just throw it in there and put a little bit of olive oil on it. Um, little, tiny little bit of garlic, tiny, tiny bit of salt, tiny bit of pepper. The, se- the, the seasoned pan takes care of the rest. There you go. And um you're like, oh wow, that's so great and everything. Well, I got married to my first wife. And one of the first things that she did when we moved in together, she cleaned the pen. Ooh. I was I was like oh. I didn't I, I it it If you are in a new, like, long-term relationship, if you marry or just move in with a partner or whatever, and they have a frying a cast iron pan that hasn't been cleaned, don't clean it. Because my award-winning steaks were gone. Oh. They were just totally gone. I I just had to make normal, you know, normal tasting. My secret, my, my secret ingredient was gone. Mm-hmm. The iron. One of these days, I'm going to start another season pan, but I, I just haven't. Yeah, it, it takes a long. It's going to. It's going to take a long time to get it to that point again. Yeah, a really long time. In. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she also had um, multiple stab wounds to the neck and face, and they they couldn't find the knife, and there were no other clues other than a strange religious painting on the wall with the name Suzanne accompanying them there was no sign of forced entry karen had money in her purse she hadn't been raped and when word of kevin's uh, kevin's when word of karen's death got out um her friends went to the the police and they report that karen had um a, a weird couple staying with them over the past month they told the police that um the the couple were drug dealing hippies and you missed it. Uh. <laughs> I was waiting for it. <laughs> Did they show up? <laughs> um, they, they they told the police that the couple were drug dealing hippies, and one of them told the you know gave the police their names, Michael and Suzanne Bear. Mm. But Karen had told her mother their real names, Michael and Suzanne Carson. So, but these two have no prior records at, at this point, and but they were, but they were persons of interest. But you can't exactly put out an APB on a person um, of interest who, you know, because who would you actually do it for? They didn't have any pictures of them. Yeah, and the the police were looking for similar crimes that had happened in the um in the in the area, but they couldn't they they, they, yeah. they couldn't come they up with anything. anything. Yeah. Right. Hmm. They totally would have gotten away with this one. I mean, that this this one was never going to come up, but put a knife in that. <laughs> yep. To be continued. Nah. Knife stab sound effect. <laughs> I have one. I, I I sent you one. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's fine. I'll, I got, I'll put, I got the others. <laughs> <laughs> I'll I'll put that in the um. It'll be in the audio version. But oh, all right, cool. Okay. But whenever I say put a knife in that, the knife stab sounded. <laughs> but, hold on. I'm just going to make it with my mouth. Um, yeah. 
they they didn't have any pictures of, of them and oh shit i just totally fucked up i'm just gonna start that whole paragraph over again mm. but karen had told her mother their real names michael and suzanne carson and these two have no prior records and they were per persons of interest but you can't exactly put an apb out on a person of interest because who exactly would you do it for you know they they didn't have any uh, pictures of them and the police were looking for similar crimes that happened in the area but they couldn't find any um one thing that was clear though suzanne and michael were very dangerous and they needed to be caught and but they 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 came up with nothing and the case went cold you know, they they could have they could have gotten away with this one, you know, completely scot free with this one, um, but you know, until you know, but later on. So put a knife in knife that. in that. Yeah, <laughs> that sounded more like a squished bug. That one. All right. <laughs> but Suzanne and Michael had fled San Francisco at that point. They literally bailed as soon as they killed Karen. They were long gone. So, March of 90, 90 or nineteen eighty one, they were hiding out in Coos Bay, Oregon, in a mountain shack that they had discovered, and they named it Allah's Mountain. Mm. And it was a gorgeous fork scene, perfectly perfect for them to live together in harmony, or not, or not. Yeah. What the place really? I mean, it it was in a you know, Oregon's forest is gorgeous. Oh but, yeah, but the um, but the, the 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 cabin that they had found, the mountain shack, it was really just a disgusting and falling apart shack with holes in the the, the walls and the roof, and it was trashed. <laughs> yeah, that was a flipper. <laughs> <laughs> Could have been investors. <laughs> But by now they had switched their titles and they were re ready to wage war on witchers and sinners all over the world. But Suzanne was scared to death about losing Michael. And she, so she had structured her beliefs and religion around mandating that the two of them were soulmates and were destined to be together forever. Mm. She made Michael her sole reason for existing and she would kill anybody or anything who came in between them. <sighs> codependent <laughs> yeah Just... mm. i don't want to know what goes on in these people's minds no pretty scary he's yeah but after a couple months in the, in the shack their food and drugs were dwindling and they had to do something so they decided that this was a test from allah oh Michael would go out and get food and drugs and bring it back to her. And she believed that Allah wanted her to fast until Michael returned. It's pretty convenient because there's no mm. food. Yeah. <laughs> it's Allah's will. Depending on how many days it took. He was gone and how remote that cabin was. He was gone for a while and it was pretty remote. Uh. Michael hitchhiked all the way to LA for to look for food. <laughs> What? Yeah. Um, while there, you know, he, he kind of got sidetracked. It was kind of like a, you know, like a, a dog. You know, just, just like, like, you know, it's like all into doing something and everything. All of a sudden, squirrel. Yeah. 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 He squirreled. <laughs> Man, that hitchcock is like a, like a, yeah, it's like a pilgrimage. Yeah. You got to do it every time you got to get food. Man. But while he was there, you know, he got sucked into the um, the hippie counterculture that was there in L.A. And he starts um, he starts writing, you know, writing all, all, all sorts of like a manuscript and everything about, you know, about their basically it was a manifesto about their um, their mission, their game plan and all that stuff. <clears throat> now, around that time, Ronald Reagan had been elected president and um, and they con. Suzanne was convinced that Ronald Reagan was the Antichrist because it, it, Ronald Wilson Reagan, there's six letters in each name. So six, six, six. So therefore, Ronald, Ronald, Ronald Reagan is the Antichrist. Ooh. So 
I've said this a thousand times, maybe not so much on this podcast, but throughout my life, I've said this a thousand times. The Antichrist will not be a U.S. politician. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, or a the U.S. Anti- citizen in that matter. The, the, the Antichrist is, um, is said to be somebody, you know, it's going to be somebody that unites everybody. And a U.S. politician... 50% of the country hates them, 50% of the country likes them. Regardless uh-huh. of what party they're they're in, it's 50-50. So there's no way in hell that a US politician would be the antichrist. <laughs> right? So but he he got side he got sidetracked with all of that and he he starts you know he he starts like you know like put like doing graffiti and everything about you know like death to death to Reagan Reagan is the antichrist and all that the end is near and he starts doing a doing his um thing where he would just run up and talk to you whether you wanted to hear what he had to say or not he started doing that again all that stuff and then but then finally he realized that he was um like oh shit Suzanne <laughs> <laughs> so he hitchhikes his way back up up there and everything and you know he's like dumpster diving and he brings some food <sighs> I... la and or la is a pretty good distance from oregon oh yeah if the Quite food that bit. he picked up yeah if the if the food that he picked up was um in a dumpster already you can only imagine what it the condition it was in by the time he got back to oregon I can imagine. <laughs> oh God! The new level of fermented foods. <laughs> <laughs> Good for your gut. Yeah, wouldn't yeah. even wouldn't even need the wouldn't even need the acid anymore after eating that no. food. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! So a couple weeks after Michael's Michael's adventure in L.A., he returned, finding Suzanne starving and delusional. She had been under constant attacks from witches and demons and sinners and even the devil himself. Huh. She was weak from all of this physical, spiritual warfare. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I meant to say that. Physical, spiritual warfare. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Uh, but and but what? <laughs> huh? And not eating. That doesn't help. Yeah. But once Michael got back with some food and drugs to, you know, to feed her, she went back to whatever passes for normal for her. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I watched this documentary. That's one of the sources that I used. It was, um, God, I can't even remember what it, Fatal Attraction or something like that. Yeah. Um, But they, where they would, you know, they they tell the story, but they like use actors and stuff like that and recreate the scenes. And on that scene, when you know, when it was talking about how she was like under this constant spirit, you know, physical spiritual warfare, it just shows her walking around this fucking dumpy ass cabin going, "Hey, another witch! It's a witch! It's a witch! It's a witch!" <laughs> it's a witch! <laughs> mm. <laughs> No, if you're by yourself for that amount of time, good God. Cabin fever, man. That'll that'll get to you. Or the shining. Yeah. Yeah. But, at least you got a lot of space in a hotel that big. Huh? At least you got a lot of space to wander and stuff like that. But so. witches. Witches. Yes. <laughs> a witch. The witch. <laughs> Shortly later, a park ranger kicked them out of the cabin. They took this as a sign that it was time to go. You think? Mm-hmm. It was a no trespassing sign. <laughs> <laughs> so they headed back to California. They never stayed more than a day or two at any place because they wanted to avoid the law and they couldn't be caught unprepared by the armies of witches that Susan was convinced was massing and looking for them. 
It's this level of fucking drug fueled narcissism. It's just, it's insane. Mm-hmm. Nobody in the entire world at this point knows who these two are. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> They're coming. <laughs> and it's just, it just, it just kills me. And the, and we're getting there right now. Oh yeah. May twenty second, nineteen eighty one. They were hitchhiking. A man picked them up. He was a, a hippie. Oh, okay, we're not there yet. Um, it was a hippie who had some property in um, the Ventana Wilderness, and he allowed Suzanne and Michael to stay in a treehouse that he had built on his property. And he had he had a small commune where a handful of people lived together. It was kind of a culty setting, but this group wasn't harming anybody. They're they're just a bunch of like minded people just coexisting and everything. And if you want to do that, that's fine. Mm-hmm. I got no problem with that. It's just, but there was, there, there was no established leader or anything like that. It was just the, this guy, he had the property, it was his property, but, and he just let people, you know, stay on it. And they just all just did the, did the thing to basically coexist together. Yeah. And you know what, that, that's a fucking, that's a beautiful utopian like type scenario. If it works for everybody. And, and mm-hmm. it seems like it did with this group. Yeah. So, just don't do that shit crazy. Right. I'm I'm not <laughs> and he wasn't he wasn't like having sex with you know with all all of the the female members or anything like that. They were what weren't abusing children or anything like that. They were just they were just chilling out, living together and everything. You know, so you know what, more power to you. Mm-hmm. I wish they hadn't come into into contact with these two chuckleheads. <laughs> yeah. But it only took Suzanne and Michael a few days to wear out their welcome. <laughs> in the day, imagine. yeah. In the days following Karen's murder, Suzanne had developed this maniacal laugh that seemed like a Tourette, <laughs> and she she just break out in this laugh all the time. It, it was a reaction to something that somebody had said. She was interrupting people, even interrupting herself. It was just like <laughs> like a like a witch. Yeah. <laughs> She's a witch. <laughs> <laughs> she, she's a witch. A witch. A witch. A witch. <laughs> I don't know why I find that so funny. I just do. <laughs> But it got bizarre, and the two began became insufferable, and just being rude to everybody, and demand, and being demanding, and acting like they owned the place. So finally, the man had had enough, and he told them to leave. But they had an agreement: the the man would let them stay there in exchange for drugs, and Michael had already paid them for a month in advance. Hmm. So, I wonder where they're getting uh, bouncing around like that. I wonder where they're getting all their drugs from. Exactly, where are they getting their money? Well, they're getting their money from the drugs, but where does the drugs Uh, come from? Yeah. (laughs) But Suzanne ordered Michael to do something about it. And they had a right to be there. And they they wanted this this commune as a base of operations for their witch-killing army. Mm. While the man was out one day, they robbed his house. And she found a thirty-eight revolver and gave it to Michael, saying that this was a reward from Allah for being a loyal soldier. Ah, shit. Allah wanted you to have this gone. Oh, <laughs> here's your sword. Yeah. I have a great gift for you. It, this this gift is unlike anything else on the entire planet. <laughs> Why am I talking with a uh, somewhat British accent with her? It's it sound like I've got this great gift for you. It's it, 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 unlike anything else on the entire planet. Here's a thirty-eight revolver. <laughs> uh, oh, <God. laughs> oh shit oh do, 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 do. it was his reward from Allah for being a loyal soldier <laughs> Allah wanted him to have this gun <laughs> mm. so they went into town and to get some supplies and I I forgot to mention that everybody in this commune was now a witch because they didn't worship, worship Suzanne. Oh, <laughs> huh. 
so they went for supplies. The holy war had begun. They got glass bottles, rags, and a gas can full of gas. And Michael threw Molotov cocktails at um, several of the buildings that were on the property, torching them, and they took off, knowing that they had just scored a major victory in the World Witch War. Whoa. <laughs> but not one person was killed or even hurt, for that matter. <laughs> that was a good thing. It is a good thing, but for them, it's hilarious because they're thinking that they're thinking, like, yeah, we just we just showed them. Right. <laughs> <sighs> they then headed for Humboldt County, California. And in May of 1982, they got jobs on a marijuana pl plantation located deep in the forest with one one way in and out. <laughs> and like on the commune, nobody there liked them either. They were once again acting like they ran the place, and they they said they were anarchists, and they're always bickering back and forth, and they were telling the farmers that they were growing the the weed the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> it's like okay, well, you know, I'm gonna come, I'm gonna come to, into your place of business and say you're doing the business, you're you're doing it wrong. No. <laughs> So, uh, Michael and Suzanne very quickly made an enemy there, a man named Clark Stephen, a friend of the farm's owner. And, and so, wait a minute, before we go any further, it, was marijuana even legal in California back then in 1982? No. I didn't think it was illegal anywhere. No, I don't think so. I didn't think it was either, but apparently... Uh, You'll see why I asked here in a minute. <laughs> it was probably a farm for something else. Other things, you know. Yeah, they probably. Were growing the marijuana next to the tomatoes or something. Or like out in the woods or something like yeah. that. Yeah. But it's <coughs> but this this um this skirmish started when Michael and Suzanne started dictating how to grow the plants and it escalated from there. And Suzanne got in his face and Clark cussed her out and Suzanne being the de devout Muslim that she was got offended by that. <laughs> Michael came charging into her rescue and in their version of Islam on this day of the week, dis disrespecting a female was almost as bad as rape. Anybody that knows anything about fundamentalist Islam knows that they aren't worried about disrespecting women. <laughs> exactly. Not on any particular day. Right. They they don't care. I mean, women women are second class citizen to the funda fundamentalist uh, Muslims. Mm -hmm. Um, but Clark may or may not have touched Susan. You know, but if he did, it probably wasn't in an abusive way or anything like that. Just kind of like maybe, maybe like put put a hand on her shoulder or something like that. You know, I'm just speculating. But um, yeah. but Suzanne made it out like he violated her. So then she ordered Michael to kill Clark. Huh. <sighs> a few days later, Clark had gone into the woods for something, probably to go check on the pot plants that they had there, like like we were just talking about. Yeah. Yeah, uh, but Suzanne and Michael followed him, and once they were a good distance from the farm, they um, confronted him, and Michael shot him twice, and then they, they doused his body with kerosene and lit him on fire. A couple days later, a dog had been seen playing with a ball, and they realized it wasn't a ball. It was a, it was a human skull. Oh. And this is why I asked you about marijuana being legal in the early 80s in California because they called the police who responded quickly. Mm. <laughs> um, <clears throat> they went to where the, the, the body was and you could still smell the kerosene. And it wasn't burning fast enough, so they covered them with um, chicken manure, which had <laughs> been used for fertilizer. So, okay, this is just a fully functioning farm, but they also had pot plants out in the woods. But, yeah, yeah I, I, I'm with you there. <laughs> but um among the remains they found clark's wallet his id was still intact and they recovered the bullet you know the, the bullets as well hmm. 
And this murder was how that particular mountain got its name, Murder Mountain. Huh. Have you heard of that? No, I haven't. It's I I had, and um, it, it, I was I was talking with Matthew from Murder Coaster about that, and he he told me, that, yeah, that yeah. that that's how Murder Mountain got its nickname huh. it's because of this murder right here of, of Clark Stevens wow. by by the, the the witches, the witch killers. <laughs> <laughs> But like in Karen's murder and the torching of the commune, Suzanne and Michael bounced right after committing the act. They went to Trinity, California, the Tr Trinity, Cal Tr Trinity County, California, and they panicked because there was a search and rescue team that was um, searching the vicinity near where they were. The witches had found them. Yes. Oh, no. The witches, <laughs> the witches are going to get, get us. So, so they bolted <laughs> in the woods into the woods in opposite directions. But these, this search and rescue team was looking for a lost hiker. Uh -huh. Suzanne and Michael weren't even re remotely on their radar. <laughs> wow. Mm -hmm. Dumb Knee jerk ass. reaction. No, narcissistic reaction. Yep. Everybody's looking for, for me because we're so well. important. Yeah, if you're guilty of something, you're you're always going to react that way. Oh shit! Yep. Ah! Witches. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I find that so funny. <laughs> <laughs> but in their haste, they dropped their backpacks, <laughs> mm. and the the deputies did find the backpacks and they searched them. And when they searched them, they found weed, they found bullets, they found a driver's license from a man named Richard Arada. They found a manuscript called Cry for War, and this was the anarchist manifesto that um, Michael had written after his revelation in L.A. the year before. <laughs> in it, there was a hit list. Notable names of witches were, that they were tasked with killing. Ronald Reagan, Margaret Thatcher, um, local politicians, even Johnny Carson. What? Johnny Carson's a witch. <laughs> wow. Hmm. <laughs> Richard Arada's idea had been stolen several months before, and Michael Bear was wanted for questioning in the death of Clark Stevens. Michael had typed Michael Bear on the manifesto, and they, they lifted fingerprints off of it and logged them into the narcotics database because of the drugs that they had found yeah um and that's a step in the right direction if you don't have any type of a miscommunication true so michael okay michael and Suzanne are now separated at this point so michael he goes to the alhambra area of la and he was arrested he wasn't arrested for any of the crimes or anything um, that he was, he was arrested because he looked like a rape suspect. Huh. He was frisked brief, briefly and the officers somehow overlooked the gun that he, that he had in, in the crotch of his pants. Yeah. The, the, the 38 that was the gift yeah. from Allah. <laughs> <laughs> um, He ditched the gun in the back of the police car. He then gave the name Richard Arada, not realizing that police had found everything in the backpacks. <laughs> mm -hmm. It didn't matter, though. Yeah. Because the police didn't search that name in the narcotics database. And that's that's not that's not bad police work. That's just they, they weren't expecting yeah. anything. He, he was a rape suspect. Um, so he... He's then put in a photo line lineup at the hospital uh, where the rape victim was, and she said that he was not the guy who had raped her. Mm. So Michael was released. But after he was long gone, the cops found the gun that he had left in the car. Oh, man. Oh, gee. You had to know that was going to happen. Uh. Mm. He lost his gift from Allah. <laughs> Allah's gonna be pissed. Oh yeah, 
Yeah. I ain't giving you no more guns. No. They then put an APB out on Richard, Richard Arata. Humboldt County officers recognized the name and the, the, mar- the marijuana farmers as well. Yeah. Hold on. Let me start that over again. Um, they then put out an APB on Richard Arata. Humboldt County officers recognized the name. The marijuana farmers, as well as that search and rescue team from Trinity, recognized the mugshot as Bear Carson. Mm. So they ran the fingerprints, and it came back to be the same print fingerprints that was on the man- manifest the manifesto. The gun itself was matched to the bullet that killed Clark Stevens. <laughs> Wow. It's all coming <laughs> together now. Yeah. The brilliant police work there. Yeah. But now it's just like, okay, they didn't put it, they put it into the narcotics database and therefore it was overlooked at the time. Nowadays, you just, all you have to do is type a, a, a name and whatever's there is going to be boom, there, everything. Yeah. You know, and their, and their list of, you know, and their databases and everything. I know they've got a file on me too from all of my search histories from putting together these episodes. <laughs> <laughs> nah, he's just an idiot podcaster. <laughs> right. Yeah, who is this guy? Tur- oh, oh, man. So a week later, Suzanne and Michael met up again in Sonora, California at a cabin on Phoenix Lake Road. It was their meetup point if they had ever gotten separated. But Suzanne had gotten there first. And she had had plenty of time to dream up, dream up new delusions. Over the six, uh, uh, over the next several months, she had them going from place to place to place to place, telling you know to do this or that and everything because she had visions from Allah telling her to go to these various places. But this wasn't anything. This this really didn't have anything to do with the, um, their mission, so to speak. She was using this tactic to scare Michael into staying with her, and it worked. So, yeah, because how could he kill witches without Susan? Without Susan, he wouldn't know if if somebody was a witch. Yeah. Yeah. She was the sniffer. Gotta kill the witches. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) You know, when I was saying earlier that I think that I would have liked to have seen like an alternate universe type thing where these people were heroes or whatever. Yeah. Don't need to do that. They just need to make a movie about the Salem witch trials. Mm -hmm. It's just literally the same thing. Although, you know, it's equally as equally as insane. And (laughs) yeah, they, it's almost, you know, when I, you know, hearing this story and stuff, it it almost reminds me of uh, Rob zombies movie, uh, the devil's rejects. Is that the first one? Ah, uh, the second one. Uh, the first one, I believe, was House with a Thousand, House with a thousand Corpses. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's been so long since I've seen this. I've seen all three of them. It's just been a long time since I've seen any, yeah, any of them. Here. <laughs> but so, but still, the the Salem witch trials. That that's what this is. Mm-hmm. That the 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 witch hunt and everything. Although that had a, a higher body count than this story obviously yeah but but it's it's the same mindset though yeah although although spurned on by drugs (laughs) it's it it definitely is the same mindset i mean the 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 people that were making the accusations back then they had to have something wrong in their head making them believe all that shit Mm -hmm. so i mean that's just that's just my opinion we might cover that one at some point A witch! <laughs> a witch! A witch! <laughs> oh, yeah. so they ended up in Portland, Oregon. They hunkered down at a friend's house there, and as they always do, they wore out their welcome. Mm. Suzanne had been ranting about her religion and insisting that the friend sit down and listen to her every word. And finally, the friend told him to get the hell out. <laughs> but, but Michael meeting a gun stole his friend's 38 revolver <laughs> oh man it was Allah replacing what was stolen <laughs> <laughs> nah, it, it didn't say that he just it just happened to be a 38 <laughs> oh. hmm. 
38's a good handgun, though. Especially yeah. a re- revolver. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't go anything smaller than a 9. I don't, I don't have a gun at the moment, but... Hmm. <sighs> I used to have a 38. <clears throat> um, but if I get another one, it'll, it'll probably be a 9. Yeah. I had a 45 <laughs> years ago. It was the standard sidearm military it was a cult 45 yeah. man it's a big round massive thing. kickback yeah actually the cults are really good for for recoil awesome with recoil hmm yeah. but anyway i'll be right back <laughs> i'll be right back so this friend lived in the middle of nowhere uh, out outside of portland you ever been to portland uh no i haven't i have i had a blast when i was there god i, I loved it but that was before the whole town went insane uh, yeah. <laughs> but <clears throat> this friend lived in the m- middle of nowhere like i just said and they said so, and they they hitchhiked down into california where they got dropped off but then they ran into some bad luck because nobody was picking them up now <laughs> for some reason um Maybe they were all witches. Probably. We're not, we're not picking them up. Yeah. <laughs> Can't have Until, but they, they were there. They were like along the, the roads and everything for like a long time. Like like maybe even a, a day before somebody picked them up. Um, a pickup truck heading north stopped. And they, they were heading south. But the driver, John Hilliar, turned around and came back and picked them up. This is the only person nice to pick them nice enough to pick them up. You know, they they had been like stuck on the side of the road and everything for hours, maybe even a day, like I said. Yeah. But so, and then this guy pick, picks them up, and then Susan Suzanne decides that he's a witch. Ah, God rest his soul. <laughs> <laughs> He's a witch. Mm. And they would have to kill him. No good deed goes unpunished. Yeah. Mm. But I really hate these people. <laughs> yeah. I'm getting I'm getting there. <laughs> I've gotten there. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like getting getting good. <laughs> So they got into the truck and started heading north and they didn't care that they were heading in the opposite direction of where they wanted to go. They had a witch to kill. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I, a witch. I don't know. I, I don't know why I find that so funny, but I do. Uh, they're on a mission. It's just a, just the witch. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mark this one too, but I really want to go into the Monty Python thing too, because I wish when she made of wood, but I, I can't because we have to wait. <laughs> so, 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 so mark that one too. To get cut out. Because <laughs> when I, when I initially sent it to you, I had it like, um, like much earlier in the episode. Yeah. But I decided that it was better to put it at the end and you'll see, you'll, you'll agree when, once we get there Right on. and we're, and we're, we're not far off. We're, we're not far from being done. I got like six pages to go. Actually five. Five. Yeah. Yep, so, five. Um, so they get into the truck and they start heading north and they didn't care that they were head I already said that. So immediately they pick an argument with John. Initially it was over music. John was listening to country music, which Suzanne hated. Mm. <laughs> I can't blame her there. <laughs> but um no, I don't. I don't hate all country music. I, I like the, the old school stuff. Yeah, old I don't. School. I don't like yeah. this new shit where they're bringing rap into it and stuff like uh, that. R and B country crap. Yeah. So, um, but the owner or driver of the vehicle picks the music. Everybody knows that. Mm-hmm. That is a. That is a unwritten rule actually yeah. it might even be written somewhere everybody knows law, that man. that's a law yeah 
It's written. Yep. Um, but then John inadvertently rubbed his leg against Suzanne, who was sitting in the middle. So she gives the look to Michael, and Michael, being the loyal soldier, so, soldier and witch assassin that he was, he grabbed the steering wheel and he jerked it. By this time, they're into the metro area of, of the city, and John safely gets the car onto the side of the road. And this is in broad daylight in the city. Hmm. John and Michael begin fighting right there on the side of the road with lots of cars passing by. Um, part of me is just like, well, why don't you fucking help him? Yeah. But then the other part is, okay, two men fighting. You don't know who the good guy is and who the bad guy is. Yeah, you could wind up with them both pouncing on you. Mm -hmm. So I, I told, I, I get it. I'm not, I'm not passing judgment or anything, especially when the gun comes out. But um, John, John tried to get away from Michael, who at this point had drawn his gun, and they're running circles around the truck with John trying to keep the bulk of the truck in between himself and Michael. This went on for five or ten minutes, and nobody stops to help, and no police cars go by at the time. And the whole time, Susan's shrieking, Do it! Do it! Do it! What are you waiting for? Do it! Shoot him! He's a witch! 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 <laughs> oh, hell. <laughs> Uh. So finally, Michael gets a shot off and hits John, and John falls to the ground. And then Michael shoots him again for good measure. Jeez. They then steal John's pickup truck and take off because right then they had heard the p police sirens because people had called it. They didn't stop, but they called it in. Mm -hmm. They sirens drove. Sirens are going. Huh? Sirens are going. Oh, <laughs> That's a, that's so cool. <laughs> I need to get one of those for mine so we can both do it at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, patch it patch it into the stream deck. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> so they drove towards San Francisco, and in Sonoma, a small town fifty miles um, from San Francisco, Suzanne loses control and crashes into a ditch. <laughs> they then take off into the woods, likely the entire time they were screaming about witches and their magic. The witches are coming! The witches are coming! <laughs> <laughs> but the witches got them. Oh. The police caught them within minutes of them ditching the pickup and they were arrested. Mm -hmm. At this point, the police learned their true identities. <laughs> Oh. This fucking story, man. This is one of the more insane ones that we've covered. Yeah. <laughs> I um I message, you know, I, I'm I'm good friends with like a lot of other podcasters and everything. And I I told a couple, you know, I, I told a couple of people that your first episode was gonna be this story. And yeah. one of them replied back and was like, Oh, you're trying to scare him off right right off the bat. <laughs> <laughs> Get to learn a lot, man. Get to learn a lot. A yeah. good psychology show. <laughs> <laughs> but, oh man. <laughs> so oh, yeah, I I'm I'm enjoy I'm I'm enjoying this one, so <laughs> <laughs> So at this point, the police learned their true identities. The story went out on the news, and Michael's daughter, Jen, learned of what her dad had been up to, and she was devastated. Yeah, poor girl. Yeah. And I picture her as like kind of like um, BTK's daughter. Mm. I have been teasing redoing the BTA, the BTK episode for a while, and I am oh. going to do it soon. So you get to sit in on that. You get, you get to be on that one. <laughs> cool. so i get to yeah you you get to yeah <laughs> go through that one it's just our 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 first um you know we did that episode way too early on yeah. um we we weren't ready for it we were still rookies at that point and it the, the it was a two-part episode and they sucked Ooh. so it's just like I, i've always wanted to go back and revisit that one so it, it's gonna happen Cool. Yeah, it'll it'll probably condense it. Be... Gonna condense it. No, I'm gonna, one. 
nah, I'm going to make it. It's still going to be a two part episode. It might even be three. Oh, <laughs> I'm going to do it right. Yeah. So, but during the pretrial hearings, Michael did all the talking. He said that he had killed John and Clark in self defense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Self defense. You're chasing you're chasing John around a fucking truck with a gun. Yeah. Clark, you shoot him twice and then burn his body. But Suzanne said nothing, not even to her attorney. She probably thought the attorney was a witch. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like that attorney. He's a witch. <laughs> But Michael wanted notoriety. And they, they they were, after all, witch assassins charged by all of the rid the world of witches. <laughs> he told them about Karen's murder, and he agreed to confess to it if he got a chance to address the press in a press conference. Mm. <laughs> this is this is where the if it wasn't crazy enough, this is where the story gets really fucking crazy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So the, the, the San Francisco Chronicle came to the jail where Michael went on a very long-winded six-hour sermon about witches, anarchy, their mission, Marxism, whatever he dreamed up about their religion on, on that particular day. Mm. He talked about how Ronald Reagan was the Antichrist, Margaret Thatcher, and you know, basically, basically he's just recollecting what was in his little manifesto that he had written up. Yeah, and I, 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 I swear, if, if they, I, I didn't look for it, I wish I had, but I wish I, I'm sure that there's a website out there with a PDF that has all of it. Probably, I, yeah, I need to find that. If I find it, <laughs> if I find it, I'm gonna link it in, in the notes um, mm-hmm. on on this on this episode because I, I would totally like to read that. But um, Michael and Suzanne, literally expected a reward for killing Karen because she was the most powerful witch in San Francisco. They were heroes. (laughs) 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 Michael even told them about their system for telling whether or not somebody is a witch. And we have a recording of Michael explaining it to the reporters where and a reporter sounds off at the end, and he had answered a question from Michael correctly. Michael tells them that he would have made a good witch hunter. So roll it. E- evil doesn't create. Good, uh. good is creative, and evil uh, is like a, a, a parasite or a leech that does, it, it can't create, but it, it, it can only uh, copy. That's, that's why. Uh, oh, we have to. We have to let it go. People are always attracted mm. to, yeah. to Suzanne. The wrong one. That was the wrong one. Yeah, it was the. It was the. The witch one. Oh, the Monty Python one. Yeah. Oh, well, you said Michael. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, so back at... There are um, ways of telling whether she is a witch. Are there? Oh, well, they what tell us. Tell us. Oh, oh, they hurt. Oh, tell me, what do you do with witches? <laughs> and what do you burn apart from witches? More witches! Wood! So... Why do witches burn? Because they're made of wood. Good! (laughs) So, how do we tell whether she is made of wood? Build a bridge out of her! Ah, but can you not also make bridges (laughs) out of stone? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, cool. Uh... Does a wood sink in water? No, no. No, it floats! It floats! Throw her into the pond! <laughs> what also floats in water? Bread. Apples. Uh, very small rocks. Cider. A great gravy. Cherries. Mud. A churches. Churches. Lead. Lead. <coughs> A duck. Exactly. So, logically, if she weighs... The same as a duck. She's made of wood. And therefore... A witch! A witch! (laughs) (laughs) No. (laughs) (laughs) But do you 
want to hear what this chucklehead really sounds like, we have an actual clip from the press conference. So roll that one, Michael. Oh, there it is. E- evil doesn't create. Good, good is creative, and evil uh, is like a, a, a parasite or a leech that does, it, it can't create, but it, it, it can only uh, copy. That's, that's why uh, powerful evil people are always attracted to, to Suzanne. Mm. <laughs> Not exactly how you pictured him sounding, is it? No. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> so Michael admitted to bludgeoning Karen with the the um the cast iron skillet, but he only stabbed her two times. Now, if that was true, then Suzanne stabbed him, stabbed her all of the other times. He said that it was because Karen was such a powerful witch and she was draining the life force from Suzanne, so therefore she had to die. Huh. <laughs> October 23rd, 1983, a psychiatrist ruled them competent to stand trial. In June of 1984, the trial started and they pled not guilty despite confessing in pretrial. Wow. <laughs> they made a spectacle of the, the trial, you know, just making out so heavily that they had to be separated, you know, and just, just basically putting on a, a, a shit show. Yeah. And they, they never admitted to doing anything wrong. Uh, they were glad that they had killed these witches and if and they'd do it again if they had the chance. They were doing a service for humanity and the court was full of witches who all deserved to die. <laughs> <laughs> July 2nd, 1984, they were found guilty of first degree murder for Karen Barnes and sentenced to 25 for life. They got the exact same sentence for Clark Stevens in 1987. They got the exact same sentence for Clark Stevens. In 1987, they got the exact same sentence for John Hillier. They'll be eligible for parole in 2038 when Susan will will be um, 96 years old. Michael will be 87. So they'll die in prison. Wow. And to this day, they have not shown one ounce of remorse. Hmm. Uh, Michael's daughter has been very vocal at speaking out against him. And in the end, this was literally a, a two-part team. Michael needed to be told what to do, and Suzanne needed somebody to control, as well as a soldier. And she got both with Michael, and Michael got what he needed as well. Wow. Uh, oh, they're still alive. They're, st- they're both still alive. They're both still in prison. Wow. But <laughs> and and they've, never, they've never changed their stance, their their ideas, their thoughts on, on everything they did. Everybody's still a witch. Nope. Oh. Everybody's still a witch and they've been clean from drugs for years now, you know? So, yeah. but they're still, I mean, so, I mean, that kind of leads credence to the, that study, but like once you do acid, it, to, it permanently alters your brain. I kind of, that kind of lends credence to that because they haven't, you know, they, they, they went to prison in 1984. They haven't touched any, any drugs and that, but that we know still, like, yeah. Well, I mean, you're, yeah, you're in jail I mean, yeah, for you... that long. I'm sure they probably got some some snitch inside that kind of feeds them some stuff. Could be, and pr- likely, likely, but <laughs> but it's just <laughs> this this has got to be in the top five most insane cases that we've ever covered on on here. Yeah, what prison are I they? Mean, in? Are they both in the same prison? No, I would. I don't know. I didn't. I didn't get to that. I wish I. Had, I wish I had searched for that, but I didn't. Yeah. Um, I, I'm. I'm assuming they're in separate prisons. Hmm. Um, like she, she would be in a women's prison. Yeah. Um, he'd be in a men's prison. I mean. <laughs> oh. Right. A witch. A witch. It's a witch. <laughs> <laughs> wow yeah mm. go ahead wasn't that wasn't much of a that wasn't much of a stint as far as their um their escapade you know as far as a a a time of 
of the no, act. and it's, especially during the eighties in California when you have all the heavy heavy hitters like Ramirez and all that stuff. You know yeah. the and all of the freeway killers that happen mm-hmm. during that time. It it's not a as nearly as high of a body count, but three makes you a serial killer and they killed three. Mm-hmm. And, but you know what, you know, I say this a lot, but there's prop. I wouldn't be surprised if there's a few more yeah. that they, that they, didn't, yeah, that they did get away with. I wouldn't be surprised because they were all, they were, they were so nomadic. They were all over the place. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, it's possible. It, it could be possible that, you know, they they might have shot somebody in, in, in the head that another serial killer got, you know, got it tacked onto, got it tacked um, onto to theirs or whatever. So it, it's, yeah. you never know because there was so much crazy shit happening during, you know, in California specifically during that time. Yeah. So, but but this is definitely one of the more crazy stories, and it's 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 comically entertaining as well. Mm-hmm. You know, in a dark in a dark sense. So, but, but yeah, I'm, yeah, I, I, I just, I stumbled across this one and everything and I, I hadn't really, I didn't really know much about it. I had heard of it, but, it, but once I started doing the, the notes, I, I was looking at that cause I, I had something initially planned for your first episode, but I decided to call an audible and push that one back because that one, <sighs> <laughs> no i, I mean could, we're gonna I could definitely we're... i could definitely see this being some like movie script or something like that it just mm-hmm. the way the way the story goes and whatnot not for like you know like the lifetime channel everybody's probably familiar with the lifetime channel There's well i was thinking a weird twisted movie on there i was thinking more along the lines of like natural born killers yeah 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 i think i was saying like you know that this would make a like a you were saying it would make a lifetime movie i was saying it would be like a like a national born natural born killers type of movie which um yeah i i haven't seen in years oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, i haven't that. seen yeah i haven't seen national born killers in a long time Mm-mm. so yeah. but so <clears throat> anyway hey a good you know good Good for good first episode, you know, with with you on board as the official co-host. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is a, this is fun. This is fun. Yeah, and yeah, it we're we're gonna we're gonna wind up, you know, getting, you know, at, as we get more, you know, start get to know each other better and all that stuff and everything. It's it's gonna it's gonna, yeah, it's gonna be a it, a lot more like involved with back and forth between the two of us. I mean, that yeah. it takes it takes time to develop that. So, but, but I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy with it. You know, it was, it was good. I, I ain't gonna lie. I was a little bit nervous going into this, but I'm not anymore. <laughs> Amen. <So. laughs> and don't take that the wrong way either. I mean, I, you know, it's just, yeah, I've been doing it one way and all of a sudden it's like drastically different and but, would have gone gone through this it had you you know become the co-host back then when the heaven's gate episode came on <laughs> but we got a we i have a doozy plan for for next week too you know and did, did, did you happen to take a look at that um you know like look up that story that i i sent you the, the screenshot of of the book Oh yeah, yeah. I took a look at the book and read the uh, read the back of it. Yeah, that's going to be creepy. Yeah, it's a it's a creepy one. It it might it will probably be a two part. <laughs> but um, if I can keep it out of one part, I will. But it might be a two part. So yeah. Um, so um. Anyway, thanks thanks for listening. We appreciate the hell out of it. Um, we, you know things you know change happens and everything the podcast isn't going to be you know exactly the same as it was before but i think it's going to be better in in the long run and um um, hook us up with a a review and a comment and all that stuff on the social media platforms and hell it's on youtube as well hit us up with a a, a 
comment there. Maybe we could start something or whatever. Right? We, yeah, we, like, yeah. we like to interact. We like to interact yeah. with our listeners. Yeah, yeah, definitely get some interaction going on, get some comments and, um, you know. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, whenever somebody interacts, I mean, it, the interaction doesn't happen very often on, on like our socials or whatever. I mean, it does somewhat, but not, not like other podcasts where it's just like, you know, you, they make a post and there's like a hundred replies to it. We're, we're, we're not there, <laughs> but, <laughs> right. but I do at, at this point, I do reply to every comment that's made on the socials. Um, yeah. So check, check out the socials and everything. And um, if they're all linked in the episode, I'm also going to have Paul's podcast um, linked in the notes as well. Tell us about that again, wrapping up. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Just um, yeah. Hit us up, throw some comments out, like shares and um, yeah. Coming to, and... a, coming to a podcast near you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And and until next week, later. Later on, guys. We'll see you then.